Aloha. It's Wednesday, it's 11 o'clock. It's August the 4th, 2021. Welcome to What Now America? I'm Tim Apicelli, your host. Today's title is Unvaccinated to Pay 50% of Hospital Bills. Uh, you know, as the Delta variant explodes in this country, especially in the states of Alabama, Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Tennessee, Wyoming. Uh, by the way, those states are less than 35% vaccinated. As, as the Delta variant threatens to once again close down this nation, as we are now going to be forced potentially with uh, shutdowns and things we can't do, uh, I think the nation is starting to get to a point where we have a population of the vaccinated versus the non-vaccinated. And I think the patience of the vaccinated is starting to wear thin. They're starting to grow weary. I'm one of them. Uh, when it comes to that, we look at a few things. And that is, um, for those who are not vaccinated, they, they threaten those who have um, immune compromised systems because uh, it's, the CDC says if you have immune compromised system, the Pfizer or the Moderna or the Johnson & Johnson vaccine may not be as effective as they once thought. And so the, the vaccine may not hold as strong for those folks than that was hopeful. Secondly, we may see a reduction in travel again and in businesses. We may see, which is the title of this show, is what about our medical costs? Someone's going to have to pay for all these hospital stays that could have been avoided by those who are not vaccinated that are finding themselves in the hospital for days, weeks, potentially months in very expensive ICUs. And I doubt very much the federal government is going to pay for the bills of all those uh, hospital stays. So that means only one thing. Uh, the health insurance companies that those people are insured under. And if you happen to be part of that health insurance company, guess what? Watch your bills, watch your premium increases come in because they're going to. So before we tackle this subject, I'd like to introduce our guests. Today, we have Jay Fidel and Cynthia Lee Sinclair. Good morning, you guys. Good morning, Tim. Good morning, Cynthia. Good morning, Jay. Good morning, Cynthia. Good morning, Jay. <laughs> hey. You guys, before I, I run into this topic, I want to throw some, um, some numbers at you, Jay. Uh, the Kaiser Foundation did a poll, and it's not a big poll. It's about a little over 1,500 uh, response. Um, for those who are vaccinated, they're saying that they hold the 79% of unvaccinated responsible for our troubles. They hold 36% against Trump because they think he started this whole thing in motion. And last but at least they hold 33% of conservative media responsible for where we are today uh, regarding COVID and the Delta variant. Now, conversely, the unvaccinated feel it's not their fault they're not vaccinated. They think 37% of the problems are coming from people coming into the country, specifically a lot of at the southern Mexico United States border. Uh, they believe that 20% of the, the problem is associated to liberal media. And then last but not least, 23% is Americans who are traveling to foreign countries and then coming back with infection. So um, bottom line is, though the good news is, we had at one point 20% of those who were unvaccinated that swore they would not get a vaccination. Fortunately, that number has dropped down to 15, 14%. So there's some, there's a, you know, there's some good news on the horizon here. But I want to get to your question, to the, the main question is, what are the costs? What are the effects, the adverse effects of the Delta variant and the spread of the Delta variant on our society and the costs associated with that? And thanks to the unvaccinated is allowed to, to grow and expand. Your thoughts? Um, well, you know, uh, kudos to you for addressing that question, Tim, because it's one of those things under our feet that's going to bite us. And it, it, uh, people haven't covered it yet. Press hasn't covered it, but it's eating away at the you know financial structure of the country, at the healthcare systems, and ultimately at the people, and at the people who buy health insurance. Their premiums cannot stay the same. You know, you and I talked before the show, and we had a discussion about what it costs for a person to be in a hospital ICU situation per day. And it's many thousands. It's, it's, it's like $10,000 per day to be intubated. <clears throat> so who's going to pay that? 
a lot of these people don't even have insurance and the hospital treats them as a humanitarian matter. Uh, and if they do have insurance uh, and the insurance pays for it, it's eating away at you know the insurance reserves. In either case, it's not sustainable, either by the hospitals or by the insurance companies that cover it anyway. Something has got to be done. Just a footnote on the people who wind up dying and saying to the doctor, okay, 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 I need to take the vaccine now. You know, I mean, really, uh, in, you know, in French, the word is moron. Um, I, don't know, I don't understand why, you know, this country is so ignorant. People do not watch the legitimate news. They don't read the newspaper. They listen to Trump. In fact, they, they listen inartfully to Trump. They're listening to things that Trump said a year ago. They haven't even kept current with Trump. But he has had this enormous Jim Jones kind of influence on them where they're ready to do suicide, ready to have their friends and family and neighbors and community do suicide uh, so that they can follow Trump's instructions. It is madness. Yeah. And we have to get back to rationality. And, and rationality would be, wait a minute, <clears throat> if you don't want to take the vaccine and you don't want to pay health care insurance, um, we're not going to take care of you. I'm sorry. We have other people we have to take care of. You are not a priority. The other people with an inflamed zorch that threatens their life and, they, and they're coming in here, <clears throat> you're throwing them off the priority list. You're killing other people for other reasons. We're not going to treat you first, sorry. And, um, and if you want to come in here, let's see the money. Uh, so yeah. you know what, what we have is um, it's out of sorts. It's, it's irrational and it's unsustainable. And the healthcare system in the country has to do something. And people may say that's draconian, but sorry, we have to survive. And it's survival of individuals and it's survival of the country. And it's not survival of people who would kill themselves out of stupidity. Thank you, Jay. I'm going to make two points before I ask you my next question. And point number one is, remember last week, we talked about why the big lie is still being believed, um, why people are still listening to the original statements of Donald Trump. And um, again, it goes back to propaganda. And it's usually the first lie is the only lie that they want to believe. And information contrary to the big lie or any lie is, is not to be believed as a suspect. And so that's why I think there's a lot of resistance of why people are not getting their vaccinations, because you're right, they listen to the original statements of Donald Trump and um, not the evidence and what's really happening around them. Uh, they're, not, they're ignoring that. And the second point I like to make, it's not only in France that the term moron is used, but Bugs Bunny said it perfectly, maroon. There are a lot of maroons out there. And, um, you know, they, and they, they abound. And I hate to say it, but um, with this Delta variant, there's no, there's no grace period. There's no, um, you know, there's no mulligans, if you will. Once you have it, you're in for a rough ride. And I personally know a Navy SEAL in, in excellent, excellent shape, a young, younger guy, Navy SEAL, uh, the specimen of health and, and, and perfect um, body condition. He literally said, and by the way, SEALs are trained to block out pain mentally. That's how they become a Navy SEAL. And he literally said for four or five days, there wasn't any medication. There wasn't one drug that would take away his pain. He couldn't block it mentally. And he said every cell in his body was screaming in pain and he had to just lay there and take it. He said he wanted to commit suicide. He wanted to, he just didn't want to live anymore. Um, that's a Navy SEAL. So if he's having that kind of problems, God knows what someone who isn't a Navy SEAL is going to feel. Uh, an ordinary person would have died somewhere in there. I want to add one other thing, though, to, to track on this discussion before Cynthia uh, does her licks. Um, you know, the, uh, you know when, when I say that the healthcare system can't handle this uh, uh, economically, financially, um, it, it doesn't live in a silo, you know. The healthcare system is a big part of our national economy. And it has an effect on our national economy. Furthermore, if people stay home, and I think when, as and when this is getting worse, it is getting worse right now, daily, uh, regardless of all the happy talk. Well, that was um, a pr prime reason why uh, President Obama wanted the Affordable Care Act. It was a drain on the economy. And uh, well, all the visits to the ERs was a drain on our, our national output. But there's another part of it, and that is that people are going to be scared. 
uh, they're not going to go back to work. Um, they're they're going to you know shrink down again. They're going to stay home. They're going to uh, withdraw from the economy. So if you thought the economy took a bad blow last summer, it's going to be worse now because they're they're determined to stay alive. So the good guys are pulling out of the economy. The bad guys are wrecking the healthcare system. This is not a good time. You know, we yeah. thought only a few weeks ago we thought we were coming out of it. Only a few weeks ago, the hoppy talk was, you know, somehow justified, but it is not justified now. I got to compliment uh, Joe Biden. He's doing what he can. But the way set, the way Trump set this up, it is really lethal. It is lethal to the country. We haven't seen all the suffering and the economic loss and the depression that will follow this surge. True. Thank you, Jay. Hey, Cynthia. Um... Is it unreasonable for an insurance company to say, we're going to cover your, your, your hospital stay as a direct result of the variant, Delta variant, COVID, uh, even though you chose, you took a conscientious decision not to get vaccinated. Therefore, that's probably why you're, you've wound up in, in the hospital, either in the ICU or some other de you know, department of the hospital, but we're going to cover that. But is it unreasonable for them to say, we're going to cover it at 50%? Because you had a decision to make and you didn't make it. And now we are spending thousands of dollars on your behalf and we'll pass that on to premium holders in the future. Um, unreasonable? Reasonable? Not reasonable. Well, you know, the perfect example of how that is not unreasonable is they do that for smokers, right? Smokers, 50%. If they're in the hospital for something that is related to smoking, then their insurance you know, will not pay more than 50%. And I don't see why it's unreasonable to do that now. Um, is it harsh? Is it, is it callous of the, those who have been vaccinated to say, you know, that's not a bad idea? Is it, is it callous on our part to, to think that way? I don't think so, no. Um, because, okay, just my own personal example, I'm fully vaccinated, but I am extremely immunocompromised. That means I could get the Delta. It may not kill me, but then it might. And if it wasn't for the Delta, I'd be doing just fine. So yes, I think I have a right. And then this is another place that's not just the vaccinated coming after the unvaccinated kind of that struggle, okay? Um, I was listening to a town hall meeting that I'm pretty sure it was Governor DeWine um, in Iowa, Ohio, right? Isn't he in Ohio? Mm -hmm. Okay. And all these people were saying, you're gobbles, you know, he's trying to promote the vaccine. And all these anti-vaxxers are show us the, you know, the data sheets and, you know, we don't even know what's in it and blah, blah, blah. All these just ignorant things that, you know, they could look up online to find the data sheet of what's in it. But um, there was this one gal who stood up and she really struck me because she was talking about her brother who is very immunocompromised, has all kinds of physical issues that he deals with. I didn't get the specifics of what, but he's in a wheelchair. He got sick, okay? They called the EMTs to come. EMT said, sorry, there's no place to take you. So they were like, what? So the nearest hospital had no beds. The next hospital down had no beds. That four hospitals they had to go to before they finally got to someone where they would at least admit him to the ER, okay, um, took 14 hours to get this child what he needed. And that and it didn't have anything to do with COVID, right? So we got to remember that these unvaccinated people aren't just, you know, endangering people like me or you know, angering the rest of us that are vaccinated, but they are endangering kids like, like this, this little girl's brother, you know, and that is what I think people need to really remember and think about because um, they're endangering a lot more than, than they're thinking about, I think. Yeah, that's a great point because, you know, sometimes we look at the cost of society and we look at it in dollars and cents. But you're right, there's a human cost and, and it's not fair for those who are immune compromised 
or it's not fair for someone who's had a stroke and there's no hospital beds for them. So, uh, and I can tell you right now, here in this state, our beds are filling up. Three weeks ago, maybe at Queens, you would have had 11 beds and now it's over 50. So they're not at capacity, but that's not to say they can't be or won't be, depending on how, how, how much this, uh, this variant spreads. No, no, also, every, day, every day we have more than 300 new cases. Sometimes four or 500. Last week, we had one day with 622. We are going north. Um, we're, we're in the in the red zone here. I don't know why that is. Uh, and we should explore why that might be right here in Hawaii. Well, we're because five because times on the average of what we because were. the Delta variant, which is most of the cases here in this state, unfortunately. Um, remember, the original COVID was an old person's problem. If you're 65 and older, it's you know, it, it's going to affect the older folks and or the immune compromised, the young and, and strong and healthy. Eh, it's going to be like a, a minor, minor flu for them. Uh, but this time, that's not the case. The, the young and healthy and strong are the ones who are ending up in the, the hospital, in the ER, in the ICU. And that's a whole different story. I have a statistic for that. Um, it's rather startling and very troubling. Um, it's from the Academy, the American Academy of Pediatrics. Uh, last week, we had 71,726 new cases, wait a minute, for children and teens. And two weeks ago, it was only 39,000. It's what was the new number? What's the new number? I'm sorry. Say it again. One, almost 72, 71,726. Okay. So it's yeah. doubled. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, you know, let's go back to your question for a minute, Tim. What do we do about this? I mean, we could wait till it doubles again and again. You know, it will be uh, multiples or logarithmic going forward, and it will have a multiple or logarithmic effect on our society and our economy and our children. I mean, it's really well. Okay. It's it's really going to town now. So, what do we do to stop it? What do yeah, we well, do to make damn sure that everybody gets a vaccine and and masks and stay, you know, I, I was just before the show begins, a buddy of mine sent me a photograph of uh, some kids in a pool, kids, I mean, college age kids in a pool somewhere in the South over the weekend. And there were virtually hundreds, thousands of them in the pool, all breathing on each other, no masks. It was a super, super, super spreader. And you say, my God, don't they read the paper? Don't they know what's going on? Don't they know? That in 10 days' time, half of them will be in the hospital or trying to find one. <clears throat> it's extraordinary how stupid they are. Uh, and we, we have raised a large generation, mostly in the South, of people who do not know what's, what, what end is up. So bottom line is we really have to change behavior. Begging them, giving them money, holding raffles. That's not it. Okay, well, that goes to my question for both of you. Cynthia, I was going to direct it to you, but both of you, I'd like to tackle it. Every state has been given federal dollars to come up with creative, innovative ways of encouraging vaccination. And you're right. It's been a form of bribery. If you want to call it dangling carrots, fine. I don't care what we call it. Um, $100 here or enter a lottery for $500,000 or or get your, you know, your, your free ice cream bar at Ben and Jerry's. You know, there's all sorts of crazy incentives. Um, but I've learned over the years that incentives don't always work. Uh, sometimes it's a combination of disincentives. Uh, 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 the hanging sword and the dangling carrot are maybe sometimes the most effective way of getting someone's attention and or persuasion. So, Cynthia, to you, what kind of disincentives should we start thinking about to encourage the unvaccinated to get the shot? Well, I mean, that's easy. Just say you can't come in this business if you're not vaccinated. You can't come to work if you're not vaccinated. Um, those sorts of things they will just completely, you know, close down their world and make it so that in order to have a life, they have to be vaccinated. Now, and my point is, you can't go to public school. You can't even go to private school if you aren't vaccinated. Now, when I went back to college, 40 years later, I don't know where my vaccination thing is, but I had to have a vaccination card for Windward and for UH before I could go there. Um, you, you have to get a doctor to sign off on it if you don't have a way to get it, but you, 
even in okay. college, right? Okay, well, we're already behind the eight ball. Look, um, all the hospitals now in this state are saying, all you employees that work for a hospital, sorry, you're gonna have to be vaccinated. But here's the problem. Here we are, August the 4th. You know it takes so many days after you get your shot before you're eligible for the second shot. And then it takes another 21 or 28 days, depending if it's Pfizer or Moderna. So we're looking at almost a 60 day stretch there. How much faster and, and more spread will the Delta variant have, not only in this state, but every other state, if everyone were to get their vaccination tomorrow? Well, pay them to right. stay home. But can't the, that's when the government can start using some of those incentives. If you have to go, if you have to be vaccinated to go to work, then you are able to have access to be paid for those few days that you have to stay home, those two weeks, whatever it is um, that you need to miss work while you wait until after your vaccine is. Well, my point is we're already behind the eight ball. We're already 60 days out from where with the, the vaccinations would be effective to blunt the, the variant. Um, so, so, so you have to do things other than vaccines during the grace period. And that's the wrong word, but you know, during the, the interim period. And that means masks. It means good masks, not lousy masks. Um, it means, uh, you know, we've heard all this before, social distancing. Um, you have to take all those precautions. Now, if people don't want to do that, there should be serious penalties. And, and I think, you know, fines are only the beginning and fines are steep. Um, there's arrests and prosecutions if you, if you, you know, don't, don't follow the rules. <clears throat> So yes, we have to require vaccines. Yes, we have to require passports. Yes, we have to punish people who don't follow those rules. It's not them they're being you know, stupid about. It's, it's hurting us, every one of us, even the people who have had vaccines, who've gone to the trouble. We are at risk. Okay, I, Jay, I, would take, <clears throat> I would take strong steps, but in the interim, we have to take equally strong steps. Just like Cynthia says, we have to mask them, we have to keep them social distancing. We can't let them participate in anything uh, without following these rules. Okay. You know that will create some uh, consternation amongst our, our population. Consternation um, is better than dying. Good point. So what does the federal government do about those governors? And I'll, I'll point out um, Texas and Governor DeSantis of Florida. What should the federal government, the Biden administration do about someone who's basically throwing everything you just said out the window and not only not promoting it, but going out of their way to not promote it? Uh, vaccinations and or masks. I mean, Governor DeSantis said, you're not gonna require masks and you're not gonna require um, passports to get into public restaurants. He took it one step further and, right? And, and said, I will not allow people, isn't it him that said, you? I will not allow mask mandates to be made in the schools. So correct. correct. kids aren't going to be protected when they go to school. That now I don't know if the federal government can censure a state governor. No, but they can hold back all sorts of federal dollars for certain projects. And I'll tell you, that's how the Civil Rights Act was effectively put into place in the South. Uh, the government said, OK, you don't want to enact now what is federal law? Guess what? You're not getting all these Fed dollars for, for multiple of highway projects and sorts of things. Right. And, you know, we got to remember that Florida and Texas make up one third of the new cases. That's a big chunk in only two states. Granted, yeah. they're states, but still, that's just nuts. OK, and so they're doing that. I, I what, totally agree, Tim. You know, you hold back federal. And I think the president has the power to do that, even if it was originally allocated, you know, appropriated. He just, um, you know, not give it to that state. Let him scream, let him holler, let him sue him, not give it to that state. The other thing, and I, I don't know where we go on this, it'd be breaking new territory, is we say if, if a public official lies to the public and people accept that to their detriment, they accept the lie and they die in the process, don't you think they ought to have a cause of action against him? Don't, don't you think there ought to be a lawsuit? against DeSantis for misleading all those people and causing them to get sick and have pain and suffering and lose their lives? I think so. And, and, and the Congress can do that. The Congress can allow a, a cause of action 
by people who have suffered as a consequence as a consequence of lies by public officials have to prove it in court. But boy, that would give them pause before they did it again. So it's a combination it's of tough. things. And it's a combination yep. of things. It's all draconian, but it's life and death. You know, desperate times require desperate measures. That's where we are. Good point. Cynthia, you want to say something? Yeah, you know, there's already a precedent for that with the tobacco companies. Remember, they were um, doing all these commercials that made smoking look so glamorous. And then all these people were dying and they took they took the tobacco companies to court and won. So that's already set a real good precedent for that, for people to be able to go out and do that very thing. And remember, as we're talking about all this, you know, instating something new, right? <laughs> remember seatbelts, okay? Nobody wanted to wear them, everybody hated them. So pretty soon it was a click it or ticket, right? So if you don't click it, you get a ticket. So the same kind of thing for the vaccine, right? If we could maybe come up with some sort of, if you don't have it, yeah, you have to pay a fine. Although I'm not quite sure how we catch people, but um, I mean, it's kind of a- Well, you know, the United States, you know, it's a, it's a, a Fourth Amendment kind of thing. Search and seizure and stop and frisk has been struck in many places. But I think that if a person presents himself um, and is sick or appears to be sick, then a, a public official ought to be able to say, let's see your passport. And if you don't have one, man, you're going to get it. We're going to do something to you for not having it and not having taken the vaccine. You know, this is a new world we live in. They could write books about what's happening here. They are right. Well, they will. Go, they are going to write books about it, Jay. Um, and, we, and we have to save ourselves or the country, aside from the individuals and the communities in the economy, the country is at risk. Well, you know, you know, President Macron of France, uh, he did that, what you said, desperate measures required desperate actions. Or excuse me, desperate times required desperate actions. And so Macron took that and he said, all right, I'm making a distinction in, this, in our society. And those with a passport have access to all the public places, all the privately owned businesses. And those who do not have a passport are not coming in. Um, I was invited to a, a gathering um, last weekend to uh, Ala Moana. It was a restaurant, and the requirement was no one comes in without their vaccine passport. It's happening here in this state. Now, I wasn't allowed access because, unfortunately, I was wearing slippers, and there was a dress code, and I didn't know that. So I didn't get in anyway. <laughs> anyway, so Cynthia, <laughs> Macron's, uh, Macron's approach, I haven't heard the media talking about it. I haven't heard politicians talking about it. Um, it's a, is it a great idea? Is it a bad idea? And why aren't we moving ahead with something like that? I think it would be really hard to, and to, you know, I don't know if it would really be easy to do here in the United States. I mean, I, it's a great idea and all, but it kind of goes against the constitution in some ways. Now, well, can we talk social psychology for a moment? You're familiar with that. So on day one, you know, we do Macron, okay? Oh, there's all kinds of you know resistance and pushback, and and everybody is complaining and writing you know articles in the newspaper. On day two, not so much. On day three, mm, it's okay. That's what you know. That's what would happen. It's like um, my firm stopped smoking. Well, I mean, they stopped the act of smoking downtown here in Honolulu. And on day one, oh, there were people, smokers, who resisted that and argued with it and made a big stink about it. On day two, not so much. And on day three, everybody was on board. You know, when you do something, you take action, there's a certain momentum in that. There's a certain, it has a life of its own. And if Biden would, would stop being so chicken about this stuff um, and take action, sure, he'd suffer on day one and maybe day two. But on day three, everybody would go along. Jay, would the polarization dis, um, unrail his infrastructure, Voting Rights Act bills, all the things of his agenda, would something like that split the entire Congress apart? And well, they're already split apart, but at least some things are look like they're getting done. Not much, but would it derail the uh, Biden agenda? I, you know what? Um, I, I don't care. Okay, good answer. <laughs> this, is life, this is life and death. Okay, those, good answer. Guys, those guys want to go down and 
be on record for having for killing people. That's their choice. They've been completely ineffectual. Congress is a casualty already. I, it wouldn't surprise me if Congress turns out to be a continuing casualty on infrastructure also. Um, but the bottom line is he's got to be strong about this. He it can't tiptoe around about it. People are dying by the hundreds of thousands. Um, and we can be, you know, and one other point I want to make is that you said that we haven't heard about what happened in Macron in France on Macron's edict, you know, and maybe, I don't know the true answer. We have a show tomorrow morning with somebody who's going to report to us on this from Bru Brussels on how things are doing in Europe. Um, but I would, I would guess the reason we haven't heard from it is that people are going along with it. Mm -hmm. If he was strong, people would go along with it and there wouldn't be all that much pushback. It wouldn't infect, sorry to use that term, it wouldn't infect the infrastructure deal in Congress. That's what, that's what I think. He's got to take strong steps because if he takes strong steps in this area, then he will have the benefit of that strength in other areas. As all good leaders know, true. Okay, we've run out of time. Cynthia, uh, what are your closing thoughts, comments? Well, we brought up the infrastructure, so I'm going to not make my last comment be about COVID or the masks or the vaccines. I believe, my opinion only, <clears throat> that the infrastructure, I don't trust the Republicans for nothing, okay? I think that's infrastructure package, all this, this stuff that's going on, they look like they're going to cooperate, going to be on board, and we're all paying attention to infrastructure, and nobody's doing anything about voting. And if we don't do something about our voting rights, so is this just another shiny object that the Republicans are trying to pull to keep everybody's, you know, oh, hope and alive over here for the infrastructure, when in reality what's happening is voting rights are disappearing and nothing's being really done about it. I mean, we got lots of hubbub happening in Washington. The, you know, Texas Democrats came up. There's lots of meetings and conferences and all this stuff. But Congress isn't really paying attention to it. And that's what I want to see, you know, speeches on the floor every day. I want them to, you know, hold sway till it's done. And instead, they're looking at this and looking at that and looking at the other. And yeah. Well, my response to your comment, Cynthia, is Lucy yanked the football away from Charlie Brown just at the opportune moment more than once. Exactly. And that's what we <laughs> There we go. Uh, Jay, your last comments, please. Honestly, I couldn't have put it better than Cynthia put it. That's exactly what the problem is. It's one shiny object after another. Congress is dysfunctional. I, I predict, by the way, that some of that infrastructure will pass. Why? Because in the 2,700 page bill, um, every senator gets something. His district is gonna be lush with money. And that's why they're gonna push that. But the real important issue, well, primarily it's life and death with COVID. And they're really not doing too much on that, sorry. Incentives and free, you know, free, free, free food is not really the answer. It has to be stronger than that. Two is voting rights because voting rights is the, framework of our future. We cannot afford uh, what's happening now. And this is going to crush America, not only for the next 10 years, maybe for the next 100 years. And when you wake up like Rip Van Winkle, it's going to be a different place and you won't like it. And then, of course, we have immigration reform. We have gun control. Um, we can, you know, we can talk about all this stuff. They haven't done anything, nothing on that. It's dysfunctional. If anything passes, it's because somebody is getting paid off. And the infrastructure bill is one great big payoff. So it'll happen, but nothing else will. That's my prediction. Well, you know, Congress used to work uh, before, you know, Ted Stevens of Alaska and the, you know, the bridge to nowhere. Um, that's how Congress, that was, the, that was the grease that made a congressman work with other congressmen, is uh, what am I getting from my home district? And I hate to say it, but that's, that was the grease that made Congress work. And then when those, um, I forget what the, the term is, but when those went away, I call them ornaments on the Christmas tree. Earmarks. Uh, when they went away, earmarks. Earmarks, thank you. Yeah, when the earmarks went away, Congress started to freeze up. Now, I don't know if there's a one-to-one -one correlation to that, but uh, seems to be part of, the, part of the mix. So 
We've run out of time. I want to thank you, Jay Fidel, Cynthia Lee Sinclair. Thanks for joining us on What Now America. I'm Tim Apicelli, your host, and please join us next week, Wednesday at 11 o'clock. Until then, aloha. <laughs>